Hey all, I know this isn't the normal format of my videos, but I wanted to take some time and discuss some interesting facts about the current breastplate I'm working on, the 16th century Peace God style. Now don't worry, I'm doing one of my regular videos on this with time-lapse shots and fun techno music, but I wanted to take some time and discuss some of the more interesting historical details of the piece as well. Now many of you out there have lost a lot of sleep at night wondering just where you have seen this breastplate before. Well, as it turns out, they're all over the place. From theatrical depictions of John Smith to fictional characters like Tyrion Lannister, Peace God breastplates are everywhere. But what makes them so popular? Well, as I've been working on this project, I've discovered some of the sheer genius that went into this design. It's simple, functional, and most important for any piece of military equipment, it's modular and versatile. The Peace God design got started not as an element of armor, but as fashion. 16th century armorers began mimicking the popular clothing fashions of the day in the styles of armor they were producing. Breastplates began to have a low central curved point accentuated by a medial ridge that imitated the popular style of doublet of the time. The resulting design has a fantastic ridged quality that holds up against impacts well. But what makes the Peace God breastplate so interesting is its simple, modular nature. This was not a design dedicated solely to fully decorated and etched harnesses of the wealthy noblemen. The design was also used in the lower cost munitions armor issued to pikemen and musketeers. When one carefully examines full suits of the period, it becomes obvious that the breastplate can be worn independently as a quick, light form of protection during a skirmish or a hot zone, or it can be accessorized with the back plate, gorget, pauldrons, etc. to give as much or as little coverage as the defensive situation required. What's even more extraordinary is that this armor wasn't native only to the battlefields of Europe. This breastplate saw the world. Examples of it have been unearthed at Jamestown, Virginia, Portuguese traders took it with them to Japan, where the native armorers took notice and began acquiring examples. These were modified and combined with the more traditional elements of samurai armor to create the Nanbando, or foreign breastplate. So this armor, possibly more than any other in European history, shows that the idea of globalization and cross-cultural exchange is not a new phenomenon. It's also an example that good design can be appreciated across boundaries, cultures, and time. Thanks for listening, and I hope to have my next video up here in the next month or so. In the meantime, take care and happy hammering.